Johnny Mara here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ubisoft and just defining them. And this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while because I listen to a lot of gaming podcasts. You guys know I literally play pretty much every game that comes out. And we make so much content on all these companies, all these franchises, all these games. And Ubisoft is a very interesting one because right now I would say they're probably one of my favorite publishers out there right now. They've just been delivering some games that I've really loved over the past couple years. And I really like their future. And I feel like Ubisoft... It, unless you're somebody like me who really takes the deep dive into thing, it's really hard to see Ubisoft as some would even argue a good publisher because they've had a huge mixed bag over the years and they've done a lot of wrong and they have released a lot of it, divisive games to say the least. But they have released some good, good stuff. But I feel like where they're at and everybody's overall view of the company kind of gets jumbled around through ca casual players, hardcore players, or just fans of Ubisoft and then people who specifically like to hate on Ubisoft. And so I feel like right now in 2024, they're kind of reaching a year of the domino effect where I feel like things are finally falling into place for them. And I feel like from this year on out, it's going to be a whole new Ubisoft. I almost feel like they're maybe on their way to reaching their prime, which I know a lot of pe people will probably argue with that. But I have information that I would think would say otherwise, and that's what this video is for. You guys read the title. We're basically going to be defining Ubisoft. We're going to be taking a look at their history, specifically their past five years. We're going to be taking a look at what their roadmap looks like, the, the decisions that they've made re recently, where they're headed, and just t overall taking a full-on look at what the company is and who they are in 2024 leading into the upcoming years. And yeah, if you guys love gaming, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, third party, whatever it may be, if you guys just love video games like I do, consider subscribing. I appreciate any kind of support you guys give me, especially the one on this video right now. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. And of course, if we're going to be talking about anything in such a degree, you got to start where it all began and not even where it began. We're going to go back and we're going to take a look at some of their history. Specifically, we're going to look at the past five years. Now, I have every major release here um, in a list uh, from uh, from the past five years, and I have basically their Metacritic score next to them because I think, you know, whether you, you, you like it or not, Metacritic score is does play a big part in a game's success. The Metacritic score is what the critics and you know, what critics see your game. And oftentimes that does have an effect on how much it sells or how much pop popularity you gain. So this is something we are going to take a look at just to get a little more information on everything going on with their releases. So in the past five years, starting off in 2019, they released Far Cry New Dawn, which was a spinoff uh, of Far Cry 5, which was originally planned to be DLC. Uh, that scored a 71. Trials Rising. 79 division 2 or more specifically tom clancy's division 2 scored an 82 tom clancy's ghost recon breakpoint scored a 56 then we move on to 2020 hyperscape scored a 68 watchdogs legion scored a 76 assassin's creed valhalla scored an 84 immortals phoenix rising scored an 81 so just off of these last two years, things aren't great. <laughs> and you can kind of see that. And unfortunately, things don't really get all that much better. We go into 2021. You have Far Cry 6. That scored a 73. You have Riders Republic. That scored a 77. Rainbow Six. Or actually, that's it for 2021. I, I, I about went on. 2021 was so small in terms of quantity that I just completely skipped over it. But it... If we just look here at the past three years, in, in three years, they only had three games that got over 80. And only and the highest one was 84. You kind of see the pit picture here. In, then we go into 2022. Rainbow Six, C, or Rainbow Six Extraction scored a 73. Roller Champion scored a 69. Mario plus Rabbid Sparks of Hope scored a 85, making that... Ubisoft's highest rated game since 2019. Then we move on to 2023. We have Crew Motorfest, scored a 76. Assassin's Creed Mirage, scored a 76. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, scored a 78. 
Avatar Frontiers of Pandora scored a 72. And that was last year. Now we move on to this year. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, scored at 86. Skull and Bones scored a 59. X Defiant is now available. There is no Metacritic score yet because it's a live service. We just entered Season 1. Uh, the Rogue Prince of Persia game, which released into er early access back in May, doesn't have a Metacritic score yet. It hasn't even technically fully released. Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition has a 79. And coming up, we have Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed Shadows releasing later this year. So... Prince of Persia Lost Crown was released this year. To start start the whole year off. It was the first, pretty much the very first game to release this year. Uh, and it scored an 86, making that the highest rated Ubisoft game in the past five years. So, what I want to do now is I want to take a look at where we are current, current, currently standing. Let's take a look at their mistakes. Let's take a look at their flops, alright? And we're going to take a look at the negatives from the past five years of U Ubisoft. So if we look at the flops, we look at the net negatives. Like I said, they had Far Cry New Dawn, which was a five-hour spinoff that was originally planned to be DLC for Far Cry 5. And kind of just felt like filler, kind of just felt like they just had it and they wanted to put it out. And that's exactly what, what they did. And players didn't really love it. I mean, it, it, it was okay, but it was nothing special. And for the most part, didn't really help the franchise in any way. They had Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which is probably one of Ubisoft's biggest flops ever. Uh, like I said earlier, it scored a 56 on Metacritic. That's uh, ridiculous. Um, and it's it, it was a sequel to a really highly acclaimed Ubisoft game, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, as well. Uh, and it was a commercial flop, critical flop. It was just terrible. And to be and quite frankly, we haven't had anything Ghost Recon since Breakpoint. It was almost like Breakpoint was Ubisoft's breaking point with that series. Um, then we got Hi Hyperscape, which was going to be, which was their their big battle royale, their big free to play battle royale, and it got shut down within a year. Uh, I actually thought. It was pretty interesting. I thought it was okay for, for the most part, but uh, unfortunately just didn't have the legs nor the success. Watch Dogs Legion, a sequel to one of their most pop popular franchise up until that, that, that point, but unfortunately uh, flopped. Uh, critical, uh, critical success was not there, uh, and the commercial success was absolutely not there. It was, it was quite frankly, another huge flop for Ubisoft. The only thing since wa since Watch Dogs Legion, Watch Dogs related, is the fact that literally as of two days ago, they just confirmed that a movie, a live action movie is in development. We look at uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. This was a fan requested game that they actually brought to life and development stopped for it pretty much like half a year after the game released because people did not like it. It as simple as that it was it, it was just not a success then we have roller champions another free-to-play live service game that you Ub ubisoft attempted this was going to be their free-to-play sports game this is going to be a big thing and it got shut down like months after the game came out we have assassin's creed nexus vr while people actually quite enjoyed this uh, this was not a commercial success whatsoever, and since then, Ubisoft has stated that they're pretty much done investing into VR games. Yeah, I can't really blame them, to be honest. And then we have Skull and Bones, which finally released th this year, which has been stuck in development since maybe even before 2017 when it was announced. And uh, this has been a game that, been, that has been constantly delayed constantly constantly talked about and put through such bad word um that now it finally released and yeah it has not been a critical success and it definitely hasn't been a commercial success either but we look at their positives and this is where you can kind of see where ubisoft is headed if we look at the positives tom clancy's the, the division two uh has surpassed 10 million players um, which was a sequel to one of my favorite Tom Tom Clancy games, the the Division. 
Assassin's Creed Valhalla launched uh, being the highest selling Assassin's Creed game uh, to date and becoming Ubisoft's second most profitable Ubisoft game of all time. Immortals Phoenix Rising launched considered, it, according to Ubisoft, it was considered a commercial success. It was a critical success. It is one of my fa fa favorite games of all time. A lot of other pe people love it. It's a very underrated game. And was one of their one and one of their only new IPs in so so long. Far Cry Six uh, did get uh, a lot of game game award nominations, uh, and the and Far Cry Six helped push that series past 90 million unique players. Writers Republic also released that year, and it was considered a uh, commercial and critical success by Ubisoft. And they have released a full season pass for that game. There are there are still updates happening to the game, and there is still quite a big player base on that game today. Mario Plus Rabbids it is an award winner the year it came out, and according to Ubisoft, exceeded expectations, even though it had a slow start to its sales. But nonetheless, I do believe has passed three million players which for for the genre mario plus rabbits is is actually a pretty good milestone assassin's creed mirage uh has sold over five million copies hasn't even been a year yet um and a lot of players actually really liked assassin's creed mirage calling it a return to form for the assassin's creed franchise and i am also on that boat i i love the fact that they went back and it was kind of a return to form for classic assassin's creed Avatar Frontiers of Pandora has crossed 2 million players, which is probably a little bit under what they expected, but they have already promised continued support. We just got the look at the first DLC with confirmed more DLC on the way, but even then, they have confirmed that it has made profit for them. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, is, like, like we talked about, the highest critical success in the past five years it currently is a game of the year contender and has made profit it hasn't sold like i don't even think over a million copies but it has made profit and so for them that's a good thing x defiant launch it, it has crossed 11 million players and with promise to deliver more content in the future season one just started for x defiant um now and then we learn about some of the mistakes that they they are learning from right and i i consider these in positives because what i put here are decisions that ubisoft has made that i do believe to be positive for them for business wise and just a company wise for the long term and some of those mistakes that they learned from they canceled a new ghost recon game because honestly, making a sequel to a really bad game, one of their biggest flops, is definitely a risk. And I think currently, while while I do believe things to get multiple chances, I would love for things to get multiple chances. In today's day and age, where game development costs cost so much, and that if it we've seen it, a big AAA game flops, the studio goes under. You can't be making risks when you have other options that are safer bets. Uh, and the same thing goes for they canceled a Splinter Cell VR game. Unfortunately, Assassin's Creed VR was not a success, and they went ahead and canceled the Splinter Cell VR game. They canceled an arena-based PvP shooter free-to-play live service game. Thank you. That is something absolutely Ubisoft does not need, and we do not need. They canceled Division Har Heartlands, which was going to be a Tom Clancy's Division spinoff. Uh, they canceled two other unannounced games that we do not know about, and they canceled Immortals Phoenix Rising sequel. Now, while this one hurts me, it makes me want to cry because I love Immortals Fe Phoenix Rising. It, it it definitely, you know, we, we don't know what the the thought process was behind it, but when you look at, like I just said, development costs and how big big a risk certain things are, when the first one wasn't necessarily the biggest hit in the world, it is. A little bit of a risk to make a sequel to something like that uh, and all these decisions are to complement the shift of Ubisoft that they're focusing on bigger and better games um, they have stated that they want to focus on a lot of their different IPs uh, they have stated they want to focus on delivering higher quality games maybe at lower fre frequencies and I think if you look at a lot of the things that's happening with Ubisoft, this all kind of makes sense. Prince of Persia made its comeback. 
with more games coming soon. Assassin's Creed is finding its biggest audience yet this year. Star Wars Outlaw this year is coming out, is one is a huge franchise. And this is a game that people have been on the right radar for a long, long time. X Defiant entered Season 1 with 11 million players, meaning this is a breakout live service game. Hopefully the legs can keep running. Far Cry 7 is rumored and reported to be in development with a whole new concept. One of the biggest issues with a lot of the Far Cry games is that people have said the formula is getting stale. The concept is getting old. This is good news. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is getting a re remake. Multiple Assassin's Creed games are getting remakes. The Division 3 is rumored to be in development. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is still in development. Just Dance continues to have annual re releases. And Rainbow Six Siege continues to thrive. If we look at the roadmap, you have Lost Crown this year. They released R Rogue Prince of Persia this year. X Defiant this year. They have Star Wars Outlaws coming out in August. They have Just Dance 2025 coming out later this year. Assassin's Creed Shadows coming out in November of this year. Right now, 2025 is empty. But we do have confirmation of Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake coming out in 2026. And we have confirmation that a Watch Dogs live action movie is now in development. So the possibilities of what they could release in 2025, whether it's Far Cry, whether it's the Splinter Cell remake, whether it's Beyond Good and Evil 2, whether it's some Assassin's Creed remakes, the possibilities are open, but they are there. But this is where we need to really sit down and where you can really get the in-depth look at what Ubisoft is and how we are defining Ubisoft. So let's define Ubisoft. And to me, from all the business decisions that they have been making and from everything that's been happening with their games, this is what I define them as. We're moving forward, that is. Of course, the past in the past, that's a whole different definition. But moving forward, this is what I think Ubisoft should try and define themselves as. To deliver quality and quantity while being sustainable. You want to elevate franchises to be staples of the company, pillars of Ubisoft. Bring back franchises and gain new players to already established IP. I think this is not only just something that Ubisoft needs to work on, I think this is something they know they need to work on. I think that is what they are working on, but also I think this is what just any company need, needs to do. Especially if you're as big as you, Ubisoft. So let's take apart all the, these different categories. Let's look at the su sustainability of Ubisoft. I think this is honestly where they kind of have it on lock right now. Because if we look at how they're going to be sustaining, how they're making their, their income, Just Dance is a commercial success every single year. Just Dance is an annual release that sells really, really well and makes profit for them every single year. Rainbow Six Siege is a live service juggernaut and is a competitive play powerhouse. That game is continuous, continuously bringing in loads and loads of cash. X Defiant just became a hit game with new breakout live service model that just entered season one. So I'm expecting big things for that. And Assassin's Creed and Far Cry are best sellers every single year a new game comes out. We have one this year. There's already another Assassin's Creed in development being codenamed Hex. And we have reports of Far Cry 7 in development. Just off of those, this is what, what we need. You need these annual releases to help bring in income. You need live service games to help have that continuous income. And you need your big IPs to have those high selling titles. That is how you create sustainability. That is how you earn the amount of money you need to then put that money into smaller franchises like Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia is not going to be the highest selling franchises. Splinter Cell is not going to be one of their highest selling franchises. If they brought back Raymond, that is not going to be one of their highest selling franchises. Mario plus Rabbids, that's, it's not going to be one of their highest selling franchises. But when you have these things for Ubisoft, being their sustainability that is strong unfortunately when you put a bunch of random live service games into to, to the mix that cost money to development to to develop and then you end up sh shutting them down that is a huge loss to sustainability when you have random spin-offs or sequels to really bad or really bad sequels to games that hurts number one sustainability but also your reputation of making games so now we look at the quantity aspect like I just said, from what we know currently in their roadmap, there are no more random spin-offs every year. 
there are no more weird live service games stuck in development like like Skull and Bones. They finally offloaded that. The weight is off of them. No more. There are no more risky live service new IPs like a PvP arena shooter that they originally had in development like Roller Champions which was just ri ridiculous. There are no sequels to unsuccessful games. Like we just said, they canceled a Ghost Recon game. They canceled another VR game. And for, even though I love the Mortal Phoenix Rising, they canceled that because it's risky. You, this year has three big releases. One of them has already become a Game of the Year contender. Another one of them is one of the biggest franchises in the world and is getting a lot of hype and looks very, very good. And another one is Ubisoft's biggest franchise, and it is capturing interest from everybody, even people who aren't fans of that franchise. 2026 already has one big game, being Prince of Persia Santa Time Remake, and we already know of five other big AAA games in development as we know of right now. Also, there are multiple Assassin's Creed remakes in the in the works. Assassin's Creed, really, there I wouldn't say there really isn't any bad Assassin's Creed games. So no matter what games they choose to remake, this is going to be great. And especially if it's some of the really older ones, those are great games. So having those remakes is automatic awesomeness. You have the annual releases of Just Dance. You have Rabbids that have occasional releases. They're consistently updating to successful franchises like Rainbow Six like Just Dance, like X Defiant, and we have DLC coming for some of their hit games like Avatar and like Prince of Persia Lost Crown with already confirmed DLC for Star Wars Outlaws. But then, but you can be sustainable and you can have a lot, but what really matters at the end is the quality. And I think this is the biggest thing that Ubisoft is going to have to prove going forward. But I think the things that have been happening gives us a lot of confidence and hope in them. Prince of Persia Lost Crown is the highest rated game in years. The rogue Prince of Persia game that it entered early access is getting good impressions so far. Star Wars Outlaws is looking good and has gone gold over a month in advance. That is really, really good. Assassin's Creed Shadows is, is being really hyped and is a dream game for fans of the series. So you already know Ubisoft is making sure that this game delivers. Prince of Persia Remake went through complete overhaul because of fan backlash. Ubisoft actually listened to, to the fans and they decided, let's make this game better than what we originally planned for. And that is exactly what's ha ha happening with Prince of Persia uh, Santa Time Remake. Splinter Cell is returning with a remake and Splinter Cell is one of their highest rated franchise, if not their highest rated franchise of all times when it comes to critics. Far Cry is getting a new concept, which we already explained. That is Far Cry's biggest complaint, is that the concept is getting stale. Assassin's Creed Hex is a completely new and unique entry for th the series. And Tom Clancy's The Division, they canceled the spinoff to work on, reportedly, Division 3 instead. And then we look at the fourth part of what I said. And this is what's defining Ubisoft. We want... We want Pillars of franchises. We want their staples. We want things that we can rely on. And part of doing that is reaching new players and capturing or recapturing our hearts. Prince of Persia made its comeback successfully. Assassin's Creed has interested gamers everywhere because of Shadows. Splinter Cell is coming back. Beyond Good and Evil was re released recently. There are Assassin's Creed remakes coming. X Defiant is a Ubisoft crossover filled with multiple of the, the franchise. 11 million players cross, that's 11 million people who are going to get at least some sort of exposure to all these franchises. You have crossovers with Mario, the biggest video game franchise of all time. Then you have the big ones, licensed IPs like Star Wars, like a a Avatar. And they're even going into other mediums such as film with a Watch Dogs live action movie movie when you look at everything they have planned in development and the decisions that they've been making recently and when you look at what we are defining ubisoft as delivering quality and quantity while being sustainable they want to elevate franchises to be staples of the company pillars of ubisoft bring back franchises and gain new players to already establish ip everything that's going on is exactly that 
And I think they're doing everything right. And that is why I'm super duper excited for the future of Ubisoft. But you guys let me know what you guys think down below. I'd love to hear your guys' comments, whatever you got to say. What are you most looking forward to to Ubisoft? Do you have a lot of faith in them? I personally am. I am here for the ride. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Johnny Morale. Peace.